<laughs> Sucking on purpose. Aloha everyone, it's Paulina. And I'm Mike. We're off here to Hawaii and in this video we want to show you guys how we broke our solar system. Not our solar system in the galaxies, but our solar power system. Specifically our battery. Um, and we're, we also want to tell you guys three different ways that you can avoid doing the same thing with your solar system. First, I want to mention that we got a whole bunch of new subscribers. So anybody that's new, welcome. Some of you guys may have come here through Meg and Elizabeth's tiny house tour of our place. She posted a video not too long ago and we've gotten a lot of subscribers since then. So I'm guessing a lot of them came from that video. Any of our subscribers that haven't seen that video, we're going to post the link in the description so you can check it out. It's like a whole updated tour of, you know, what we've done with our container. We haven't done one in a while since... I don't think we've ever done one. Well, Kathleen did one and no, Kitas like, did in one. In our own channel. We've never done our own tiny house tour. We've always had friends do them of our place. And this one is the most updated. So Michael's the expert on the electrical, so he's going to explain to you guys what went wrong and how to fix it. Put your nerdy glasses on for this one. <laughs> All right, so to explain more about how the battery broke, what happened was, first of all, we had a very small battery. It was only 160 amp hours, which um, if you're going to use only 20% to have the longest lifespan of the battery, it's not very much. So basically there were some trees around here that were shading the panel more than optimal. Um, we were charging things at night, such as a laptop, which we didn't realize how much these things draw to charge up. So basically those couple things are what broke our system. We have bought a new battery and it's twice the size as our old one. And we have done a few things. I have a list of three things that we did. A lot of you guys know already that our solar system broke a long time ago and this video we're just making, it's actually good that we waited this long to see that what we're doing now ensured that our battery's working properly now and nothing's breaking. So yeah, it's been a year now and we've done basically three things to ensure that this solar system doesn't break like the last one. All right, so number one, the first one's really obvious. Cut down all the trees around the area and now the, the solar panel is getting sun pretty much the whole day as long as you know it's not too low of the sun. Um, so really the shade is the number one killer of making electricity when um, using solar. Number two might be pretty obvious too because I just kind of talked about it but know how much your appliances draw. So what we were doing, we had some guests and everybody wanted to charge their laptops and it wasn't very sunny. And each laptop uh, draws about 60 to 80 watts depending on how uh, empty it is or what kind. Having two of those plugged in just probably drained it so quick and there wasn't much of a battery. You know, at night we were getting the alarm from the inverter going off and that's a sign that the voltage is too low and your battery is, is drained more than it should be. Make sure you know how much power your appliances are drawing, your light bulbs, your fans, refrigerator, whatever you're using. Make sure you know. Number three, this is where we're going to get a bit nerdy with uh, percentages and numbers and stuff. We're going to get a bit nerdy on this one, number three. <laughs> So number three, you want to calculate how much you can use per night and you want to stay a bit on the safe side. Only use 20% of full capacity of the battery to extend it to, I think this battery, it said it would last 10 years, 15 years if you use only 20%. So to calculate that, you're going to times the amps by the volts and then you're going to get the watts, how much you can use. Then you're going to take 20% of that and see what your number is. And that's what you could use per night. So in our case, we have a 330 amp battery. So you take 330 amps, times that by 12 volts, you get 3,960 watts. And then you take 20% of that and you have 792 watts. So that's what we could use if the battery is full overnight when we're not making power. 
we could use it's pretty much roughly 800 watts of electricity so then we got to take into account what are we going to run overnight we're going to run lights how many watts are they how many hours are they going to be on we just got this fan that we use sometimes at night when it's like kind of muggy or like hot, damp. We use it during the day too, and we have to make sure that we're still making enough power so that it's full. So basically what we've done is we calculated how much we're using, and it comes out to even less than 800 watts, which is really good. So I've wrote down two examples of what we use overnight and the first one is what we use maybe four hours out of the night, like our lights. That's pretty much it, just our lights. So if we're using 60 watts of light for four hours, which I figured from six o'clock to 10, we're usually always in bed by 10. So if four hours of 60 watts equals 240 watts. The other wattage may come from this fan. If we're using it overnight, you may have a refrigerator or something that needs to run constantly. I hope we get one soon, refrigerator, but something that's continuously running, it's gonna need um, to be running at least like 12 hours overnight without um, the sun. So in this example, um, this fan is like 30 watts, and if it's running for 12 hours, it's 360 watts. So I've added the two and I've come up with 600 watts which is 200 watts less than our 20% allowment of watts to use. One other thing I wanna mention is you want your battery to recharge as quickly as possible in the morning, at, you know, when the sun's coming out. So you have to figure how long is it gonna take for that 20%, uh, 800 watts in our case, or we're only using 600, how many hours is it gonna take for that battery to recharge to 100%. We're using a 375 watt panel. So I've calculated on a sunny day, it only takes two hours to uh, get that back. And on a cloudy day, it may take up to six hours to get that back. So you definitely wanna be aware of if it's been a sunny day or a cloudy day. So the amount of electricity that's coming from your panel to the battery is gonna be significantly less, up to 25%, even 10% I've heard if it's really cloudy. So you basically gotta take, in our case, 375 watt panel, 10% of that is only 37.5 watts. So that's drastically lower. It would take a long time for your battery to charge at that rate. But for the most part, I think you could take the 25% figure if it's not super cloudy and you know, maybe the sun comes in and out. Our panel is probably making 100 watts on a cloudy day. So that's where I got the six hours to recharge. All right, so I, I guess that's it. Anything else you guys want to know? Let us know in the comments if there's anything else you'd like to know. So Paulina actually just brought up a good point. What if your battery isn't charging up completely during the day? If it's not doing that, then you might want to think about getting more solar panels because it's really important that your battery fills up during the day. Uh, if it's not, then you just definitely need to be bringing in more power. So you need to get more solar panels. The more consistently your battery is not getting charged, the shorter the lifespan of it. To be safe, you really want the battery to be charging fully every day. She also brought up a good point. How do we know if we're charging it completely? Because ours is so basic that it's really just one, two, or three dots telling us. So if it's at three dots, we know we've made um, full power for the day. Uh, today it was really sunny. I looked at my watch and it was 11 o'clock and we had three bars. So, I mean, that's pretty good by 11 o'clock and we're almost, we're in the winter months now and there hasn't been much sun. So that's pretty good that it recharged at 11 o'clock completely. We might want to think about getting some kind of like voltage meter to tell us if it's full because really like it could be full and only be on two dots but like if the sun isn't out it will never go to three and it goes off three like right away right after um, the sun goes down. So we know it's full but it goes to two anyway. It went back to two, but it was just at three. So like, and we're not using much electricity. So like, I know it's full because I saw the three already and nothing's really so, running. She said, she said no at this point. So I know. 
You didn't see three? No. I saw three. Mm -hmm. sure. I got proof because I made a video of it. All right, so that's it, guys. I hope you figured out how to make your solar power system not break down and that your batteries last forever and ever thanks to our mistake. Good thing it only costs $400. $700. $700. I understand it. Like, I get it. So what? So I'm not gonna pretend that I'm stupid and I don't know what you're saying because I know exactly what you're saying. I just, I don't feel like explaining it because it's so boring. Like, let me just scroll through my Instagram. <laughs>